Okay, here's the fourth part to lesson one. Just finishing off a couple more uh, examples here on ice tables. It really is the stoichiometry you know, you're just applying it to a different part of your chemical reaction. You're applying it to the changing concentrations caused by initial forward and uh, re responding reverse reaction that eventually come into balance. So here's the information given to us in question number two. One mole of hydrogen gas and 0.75 moles of iodine gas are placed into a one liter container. So remember, we do want to have concentrations in these particular problems, so we would need the ratio between moles and liters. One mole of hydrogen gas in a one liter vessel is a one mole per liter concentration, so that's where I get this. For our second one, we had 0.75 moles of iodine placed in a one liter vessel for 0.75. And of course, we would start with nothing in our product. This is our most likely scenario. We allow the reaction to start, occur, and achieve balance. And we measure, in this case, one of our equilibrium concentrations. Again, based upon the color of the vessel, we can figure out that there are 0.9 moles of hydrogen iodide gas. And so we've given this to you. In our starting ones here, we will be given a equilibrium concentration to resolve at least one of the changes. Once you have one changing concentration value, and in this case we'll get it here for hydrogen iodide, we can extend that to make predictions about all other changes. So in these starting ones, expect to find enough information to get at least one equilibrium concentration out of the expression so that you can start to fill out your ice table. So hydrogen iodide went from 0 to 0.9. So that is an increase in concentration of 0 0.90. I can use this to make predictions about what the other changing concentrations will be using my stoichiometric ratio from the balanced equation. So in this case, I have 0 0.90 moles per liter of hydrogen iodide. Again, because this reaction vessel is all one liter, remember it's just like the picture in your notes and the picture in the textbook, your liter is a constant here, so I'm just going to multiply and divide by 1, which cancels out. This allows me in this case, because of the fixed, uh, fixed volume, to go straight to the stoic ratio between hydrogen iodide and let's say we want to figure out iodine. You can see that for every one part of iodine that is reacted, two parts of hydrogen iodide are produced. And so 0.9 divided by 2 gives us a 0.45 mole per liter change in concentration. So this would decrease by 0.45 moles per liter, leaving us with an equilibrium amount of 0 0.30. So my reactants should decrease in concentration. My products should increase in concentration if I'm starting from zero. Remember the initial rate of, rea of the forward reaction is fast and then begins to slow as we start to achieve balance. For this one, all right, you can see that you have the same mole ratio but I would like to see you guys practicing that. It's a little bit of writing, but it's not onerous. All right, and we can figure out between hydrogen iodide and your hydrogen gas, and you can see the same one to two ratio from your balanced equation. This gives us the same changing concentration. All right, so this is decreased by 0.45. But because I started with a greater amount, I have a different mm -hmm. equilibrium concentration of hydrogen remaining. All right, there's my completed ice table. Now I want to go do a percent reaction for this one. Percent reaction, or percentage yield if you wish, is just your actual concentration versus uh, some sort of initial constant, or pardon me, theoretical concentration. Now, sometimes we get a little confused as to what's going on here. Actual is what you actually got. Now, if we want, we can look at this from any point of view, but we'll look at it from the point of view of the product because it probably makes most sense for us. We got 0 0.90 moles per liter, didn't we? Okay, so if I have 0 0.90 moles per liter,
All right, that is my actual concentration. The question is, what is the theoretical amount? The theoretical amount is going to require one more stoichiometric uh, prediction or calculation. All right, because we are consuming these at the same rate, I'm just going to describe this one since I've run myself out of space here. Hydrogen is being consumed at the same rate as iodine to produce product. Which one of these two things do you think would be the limiting reagent, or which one should run out first? Bonus points to everybody that said it should be the iodine, because if I'm consuming them at the same rate, 0.75 moles per liter will be exhausted long before 1.0 moles per liter. So iodine would be a limiting reagent if this was quantitative. Well, the theoretical amount assumes quantitative state. What is the maximum amount that you can possibly get? So I like to sometimes call this a theoretical maximum. All right, if all 0.75 moles of iodine were consumed in a 2 to 1 ratio, how much hydrogen iodine could I possibly uh, produce if this reaction were quantitative? Well, just really quickly here, maybe just off the margin, 0 0.75 moles per liter of iodine times a 2 to 1 ratio between hydrogen iodide and iodine gives me 1.50 moles per liter. Hope that makes sense to everybody, but for a theoretical maximum, we're going to pretend that things are quantitative again. We can make a prediction about what the maximum concentration of a product would be, and now we can compare. If this was quantitative, and the reactions that we remember from chemistry 20, I should have gotten 1.50 moles per liter. Unfortunately, hydrogen iodide can decompose at this uh, set of temperatures, and so some of it decomposes as it's being formed, and I'm not getting to that final quantitative state. Because as I consume hydrogen and iodine, I'm also producing it in the decomposition of the reverse reaction. So 0.9 over 1.5 times 100 works out to a 60, whoops, one too many sig digs there, a 60% reaction. All right, so what would we say? Well, if I've got 60% of the uh, total product, we go back to that table where we talk about what the position of equilibrium would be, and you can see that you've been able to make greater than 50%. So back up here, we would show that this is greater than 50% reaction, and we have a product-favored equilibrium. The forward reaction is slightly easier to run than a reverse reaction because you are getting slightly greater than half the amount of theoretical product produced. Okay, one more to try. I guess I'll be adding that to another video since I blathered on in this one a little bit too much. Um, take a look at number three. Again, same idea. What I would do if I were you, I would try question number three, or example number three. Uh, make that solution, make that determination, much like we did here. All right. See if you can get to an answer, and we'll compare it to the solution in the last video for Lesson 1 of Chapter 15. Okay, good luck with it. See in one more video to go here uh, to finish off this ice table and percent reaction idea.